What can I do because my parents hate me? I have tried to apologize when I do wrong, but they are hard to understand. Now I also hate them. What should I do? And another question, what can the church do when a pastor has a great conflict with his wife until they fight before the people? Okay, so uh, if my parents hate me, I've tried to apologize when I do wrong, but they they hard to understand and they, and now I hate them. Now it depends on the hatred because sometimes they look like they're hating us, but they're not really hating us. Uh, it, it's just they have anger. Now that two things, hatred and anger are two things. If we have done something wrong and they're really angry, that's anger. That's not hatred. Hatred is is like saying. I hate to see you. I don't want to see you anymore. I wish bad things would happen to you. I don't. I don't like you at all. I don't. I don't want to see you at all. And, and you are. You. You know. You. You bring pain to me. I, I want you to disappear. Now this is hatred. Now, hatred is is difficult because hatred is very powerful, very strong, and it's very negative. So if your parents really hate you like that, that he really doesn't uh, want to see you anymore, and um, what can we do? What can we do is we can, you know, come to God and repent of everything we've done, done wrong, and then we want to, uh, you know, because according to God's word, now the five step to victory. First is. Uh, become aware of the sin and then it's destructive. If, if we hate, if a person hates the parent, it's sin. It's destructive. It will destroy his life. Even though it's the parents who start hating him, but he continue to hate the parents, then it's serious sin. He can lose salvation if he continue to hate. So we need to convince ourselves that first, uh, God has many blessings, again with grace. God has many blessings for me. God has a wonderful plan for me, even though my parents are hating me now, but I still can change my life. My life can go better, so I don't have to be affected by my parents. I can treat them well. Maybe one day they will change. Now, if this person says, I apologize when I do something wrong, that means this person might be doing wrong things uh, many times, so he need to pay attention. Now, how can we prevent ourselves from doing wrong things? The way is that we will uh, pay attention before we do something. Be, when we think about something, we be, be 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 careful. Am I thinking some negative thoughts? Am I disliking someone? Am I thinking thoughts that can hurt myself and hurt other people? If I am having negative thoughts, I should change my thought first. Then what is the motivation to change my thought? If I think according to God's way, then God likes me and God blesses me and forgives me and He will bless me. So it's better that I have positive thoughts. I would have, you know, I, I continue to, you know, to have positive thoughts and continue to love people, care about people. That brings blessings to me. So that is the, the grace that will encourage me to love God and obey God. And there is the warning also. That's from the law. The warning is that if I hate someone, if I have you know, wrong attitude, do something wrong, it's going to destroy my life. Therefore, I'm careful before I talk to someone about something serious. Now, when I have to talk about, to someone about something serious, for instance, uh, if someone has committed a sin and I want to talk to the person, sometimes I will talk with my wife first, okay? I want to confront this person about his sin. What is the best way I can talk to this person? I ask my wife and we discuss what's the best way. Uh, this is being careful because I don't want to make mistakes. I want to think carefully and my wife is very, uh, very wise. She would tell me, okay, and when you say something like this, it could cause him to feel uncomfortable, even though 
you know, it's not wrong, but it can cause him to feel uncomfortable, and it doesn't good bring good results. Therefore, I can re, you know, say it another way so that I can I avoid hurting him. So, you know, not only am I careful not to sin, but I'm careful not to hurt the person or make the person, you know, uh, have strong reaction. So when we are careful in everything we do, when we, before we talk to someone, before we uh, help someone, before we confront someone, uh, before we uh, make some plans, uh, do some actions, we want to think carefully. That is being careful with our life so that we don't make mistakes. So that's how you will reduce the amount of offense for your parents. And then we try to, you know, first we change ourselves and say, it is better that I have, you know, I treat them nicely, I treat them well, and I'm kind to them. Uh, and instead of being anger, angry with them and not to hate them, when I hate them, it's going to destroy myself. So I'm not going to hate them. And then I try to be nice to them. Okay, now if, if we're trying to be nice to the parents, and according to this person, the, the parents hate him. Now, if it's, the parents really hate him, like, I want to kick you out of this house. I don't want to see you. I, I detest you. I don't like to see you. You are garbage. You know, if he says something like this, then the relationship is so bad. And, um, it might be maybe good for a while to stay away from the parents. Because, you know, maybe when things calm down, it will be better. Now, if we try to rebuild a relationship and it still doesn't work, and the person continues to hate. Now, hate is different from being angry. If the person just being angry is different from, being, uh, from hating someone. If a person is just being angry, we can accept that this person is weak. Uh, he has problem with his anger, and so he continues to hate me, uh, to be angry with me. Now, but hatred, we can still say that it's okay. He, he is, uh, you know, he doesn't have Jesus Christ, therefore he hates me. It is his problem. I don't have to take it seriously. We can still, you know, not to be affected by that. But we, when we convince ourselves that God likes me when I obey him, God likes me, God is blessing me, I don't have to be affected by people. What can people do to me? Psalm 118, verse 6. Psalm 118, verse 6. If God is helping me, I don't have to be afraid. What can people do to me? So they cannot hurt me. They cannot steal from me. They cannot take away the good things from me. Therefore, I don't have to be angry. I don't have to be frustrated. And I can treat them well. Now, this is... Uh, now, why am I motivated to uh, work on my life so that I'm like that? Because... I treasure the plan of God in my life. I treasure that God has a wonderful plan in my life. God wants to do great things in my life. Therefore, I don't want to be offended by anyone. If anyone offends me, I won't take it. I would, I would not let this person affect me. I want to continue to live in joy and peace and live out my whole life according to God's plan. I want to live in joy and not to be affected by people. So I treasure my life. So that is that is uh, most important thing. So, so in your case, I would say, uh, you know, try to treat your parents nicely and handle our hatred, take away our hatred. Because if we continue hate, because uh, in uh, Galatians chapter five, it does talk about hatred that this cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So we don't want to lose salvation. So we will say, okay, that is his problem. He has problem doesn't mean that I have to be affected by them. I can continue to have victory over that sin and, 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 and bless them and help them, to be nice to them. And when we do that, God is happy with us. God is happy with us and God will be, you know, God will bless us and God will, uh, He's pleased with us if we can, uh, be nice to the parents who hate you, okay? 
But if the parents are not really hating you, they're just angry, then this anger can be reduced as we treat them nicer and be kind to them, then gradually uh, th the anger can go down. And also we ourselves, uh, we are not offend offended by them and we treat them nicely, uh, then we have victory. We have victory and then we can gradually overcome uh, that hatred, uh, that help them to overcome the hatred or anger. Okay, um, what can a church do if the pastor has a great conflict with his wife uh, till they fight before the people? Then this is, uh, this usually takes, uh, needs counseling. You know, what, you know, because what uh, you said here is just uh, too simple. So what did the pastor do? What did the wife do? What has they, what have they done? They might have done something really bad. First cause, one of them has done something really bad and, the other, and he doesn't apologize, he doesn't try to uh, correct his behavior, therefore he, he continue to, th therefore they, the relationship get worse and worse. So something has happened and they have not apologized, they have not forgiven, they have not handled the problem. The second is, they just have not handled the relationship. Now, I can talk about marriage relationship tomorrow, uh, about the difference between male and female, because male pay attention to action and uh, uh, they don't, you know, they don't pay attention to relationship uh, and feelings and listening that much. I mean, not all, I'm talking about generally. Generally, they pay more attention to action, what they want to do. And also, generally, in a marriage relationship, uh, generally the man is more interested in sex, uh, in action, having fun. And the wife has a strong responsibility for the family. And uh, usually the wife has a stronger sense of responsibility for the family. And the wife wants to be listened to. The wife wants to be cared for. And, uh, that the husband will care for her and listen to her and be kind to her. Now, if the husband doesn't do that, you know, sometimes some pastors, are, you know, uh, uh, now not all pastors are like that, but it's true that some pastors are like a master in the church. Now, the Bible does tell us not to be, you know, we're not masters of the church. We should be examples to the people. We're not controlling the people. So some pastors, they are controlling the members. And then when they go home, they want to be, they want to be controlling the wife. Now the wife submitting to the husband doesn't mean the husband control the wife. Actually in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 22, it talks about the wife submit to your husband. But in verse 21, Chapter 5, verse 21, it talks about that submit to one another. So the husband should also submit to the wife, should listen to the wife and listen to her needs, listen to her feelings and respond to her feelings and be kind to her. So that way, then, um, that is mutual submission, then the relationship would be better. That, you know, many people misunderstand that and think that the wife has to be like a servant, has to submit to the husband in every way, even if the husband doesn't love her, doesn't care about her, and uh, the husband just command uh, the wife to do things. Now, if a pastor is like that in a church, he commands people to obey him, and he, he forces, he is uh, forceful in a church, he gives pressure to the people to, uh, uh, to submit to him. Now we understand that members should submit to the pastors when the pastors submit to God. But if a pastor continues to sin himself, if a pastor uh, doesn't handle his anger, is not teaching the truth, then the members doesn't have to submit to him anymore. And we need to understand this. A pastor is not, you know, he is not almighty. He's not always correct. The member should submit to the husband, uh, to the pastor, as far as he is following God. 
But if he's totally not following God, he's sinning, he's not teaching the right doctrines, then the members should talk to them and handle, should talk to the pastor and handle the problem with the pastor. So if the pastor is, you know, controlling the people and then when he goes home he controls his wife and his wife is not happy and then they start to fight or if the husband if the pastor doesn't learn to listen to the wife and love the wife so this is very important to love the wife to love uh, so that there is a good example for the church that the people see that the pastor loves the wife uh, uh, and respect the wife and be kind to the wife and the wife submit to the husband and then there is a good relationship and then they can serve God together this is a good example so if the pastor cannot do that then they need counseling I'm willing to do counseling uh, on that you know on that couple to help them to overcome the problem now so now if the pastor can handle the problem himself if he can be gentle with the wife and try to handle it or if the wife is the one who is causing problem and if the wife is willing to submit and uh, be more gentle and and uh, you know that they love each other because if they don't love each other they hate each other then the hatred will become stronger and stronger then it cannot be hidden so we have to know where the problem comes from if the, there is hatred it becomes stronger and stronger then it cannot be hidden it would be shown in the church if it's shown in the church the members have the right to handle it they have the right to have a committee of mature Christians to talk to the pastor to talk to the pastor's wife to find out what happened to find out you know can anything be done can this situation be fixed and can a marriage be fixed now of course we want to fix marriages we want we don't want people to have divorces we don't we want them to 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 learn to repent and be kind to each other and love each other and re rebuild a marriage actually marriage is like a mirror of a man's life or the woman's life the marriage is a mirror that shows the the real life of the couple if a couple have real spiritual life that they really love God and love people then the marriage should show the goodness of the spiritual life that the spiritual life is good that they are good Christians that they are loving Christians but if they just you know they would do evangelism they will lead the church they will preach but at home they're yelling at each other they don't love each other then they're not obeying the Word of God because the Word of God says the husband love your wife as Christ loves the ch church so this is a command if a husband doesn't do that he is sinning so um, if they manage that they you know if they manage it and take care of that it's not just shuffling the problem under the carpet that is an expression saying you just push the problem out of sight and then it doesn't it's not taken care of then it's not fixing it but if they really you know they uh, fix the problem they they really take care of it then it's fine then it's being the marriage is being healed but if not the members have to take care of that and then if the pastor really continue he cannot continue to take care of the problem and then they f fight against each other all the time he should not be a pastor he should leave the church now that's according to the truth if a pastor because Paul does talk about that as a pastor that he doesn't beat people he, he will have a good marriage if the marriage is breaking up he cannot be a good example of other people so he should repent and do things to correct the situation and I'm happy to, to do things to help to counsel them to help them to overcome this problem um, because this problem eventually cannot be hidden it will become so serious that they start to fight each other and then 
it, you know, what kind of church would that be? That would be a very serious problem. Okay, now, now I see more questions now. What can I do when my pastor is forcing his members to drink oil, pours it to members, claiming that now no satanic power will affect them? Now, the Bible does talk about anointing, but the Bible doesn't talk about drinking oil. Now, pouring on members, anoint doesn't mean pouring. So this pastor has some teachings that is not from the Bible. That now, sometimes some you know I've heard that in some places that uh, there are teachings that are not biblical and s strange, and sometimes even you know it's against the biblical principle. You know that and uh, you know and a pastor forcing people. The Bible doesn't teach that. The Bible never teaches the, the pastor to force people. They're actually not to be controlling. Pastors are not, supposed, are not supposed to be controlling people. He can reason with people to explain why he does certain things. But if not taught in the Bible to drink oil, it doesn't mean you drink oil and you have anointing. Anointing comes from loving God and have a good relationship with God. So in that situation, I disagree with the Bible, with the, I'm sorry, disagree with the pastor that he should not do that. And the members doesn't have to submit to that. And they can handle the, the pastor. The, pa the members can talk with the pastor together. What do you base on when you force people to drink oil and pour oil upon people? What do you base on? Uh, this is not biblical. So the, uh, the members should handle this problem. You know, we must understand that the pastor is not a king. The members are not his subordinates. We are all, now, in a normal situation when a pastor is following God, the members should submit to the pastors and obey the pastors. But if the pastor is not, then the Christians also have the authority, as in Matthew 18, if someone sin against you, so that in case in that case is the pastor sin against you, then you speak to the pastor. If he doesn't listen, you bring one or two person. If not, you bring the whole church to talk to the pastor. This is against the Bible. So if there are practices in a church that are against the Bible, the members have the freedom to handle it. Okay, and I. Now, I, I hope this can be handled. I hope this doesn't, uh, you know, that this would not, that it can be resolved. And I hope that it doesn't bring destruction. I hope that it will bring reconciliation and, and uh, following the truth. If a pastor is not following truth, the members have the right, the church have the right not to accept the pastor. And uh, so that's, that's up to the members what to do. Okay, uh, let us pray. Now we have to conclude now. It's time already. We'll pray for God's guidance and strength. And so I hope we all have wisdom to handle the problems in the church. And if you have problems, you can send to me and I'll answer you. Okay, let's pray together. And you can stand up and relax and enjoy God. Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you. You are loving God. And your love will change our life. You will change our life so that we'll obey you, we'll love you, we'll follow you, we'll glorify you. Lord, help us to obey you and submit to you. Help us to live a good Christian life. Help us to show the Christian uh, your, your, the joy of the Lord, the love of God, uh, the patience and kindness of God. Lord, help us to overcome our problem, overcome our hatred, our sins, our anger, our frustration, our lust, and help us to, rem to 
understand that these sins are destructive. It can destroy our Christian life. So we want to submit to God and ask God to help us to overcome our sin. As soon as we notice our sinful nature, then we, our sinful thoughts, immediately we want to ask God to forgive us and, and change our way of thinking uh, uh, according to the Bible. We want to change our value system change our value system so that we'll follow God and obey God. God, we thank you, we love you, we adore you because you're a loving God, you're a kind God, you're a holy God, you're a good God. When we follow you, you bless us and actually you bless us first. You bless us first. When we continue to follow you, you continue to bless us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're so wonderful. We love you. We adore you. We want to obey you. We want to be blessed by you. We, want, we don't want to lose your blessings. We don't want to give the devil a good hope. We want to enter your perfect time.